Where's my tea? Where is my... Here's my tea. I'm still brewing it. It's got a tea bag hanging out of it. Here we go. Now. <coughs> Welcome to the second... The second video uh, in cleaning up our little MG engine and getting it all sort of resealed and bits replated, that sort of thing. This is just purely cosmetic. There's not really much mechanical stuff in it. Uh, in this one, of course, we clean the block art, we strip off the bits we need, and we give it a paint job. I've only given it one coat, and I've just given it to it now. Um, so hopefully you enjoy it. I've been sort of doing bits on this and doing bits on the bike. I've been making little headlight bushes and out of scraps of aluminium and that sort of stuff. So I'm sort of going between job to job, if that makes any sense. So um, in this one, we look at cleaning everything up. We look at the parts we've got. Um, there are still one or two on order, I think. What have I got on order? I've got the front gearbox gasket and input shaft seal and the stickers for the rocket cover. They're the bits I've got on order. The rest of it I have, and we'll talk a little bit about that too. Um, to my pleasant surprise, the dearest part was the um, carburetor, or yeah, the heat shield that goes over the exhaust manifold and protect, protects the carburetors. That ran in at around $110. The rest of the stuff was chicken feed. It was really, really cheap, and that's another reason I like these as a, as a good, affordable plastic. So, hope you enjoy it, and also please leave uh, comments as you see necessary. So, thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy. Check this out from Mess. Um, looks like it was covered in oil. It wasn't. It was actually black paint. You can see the runs down there. I just used a bit of. I always save the old, um, just old thinner that I've cleaned the guns out with. As use it as degreaser, and. Um, I'm just going around, cleaning in an awesome granny with a little wide brush. You can see it all just comes off. The original colour isn't dissimilar to Holden Red Motor, Rocket Red. But, um, just going around in here. Oh, and we go this way. There we go. I'll just get it all out, because the last thing we want is peeling paint. And that comes off quite well. Right, so I've cleaned it up as best we can. We've got rid of the black paint. You can see the red sort of sitting underneath there. I'm just going to pop this sump off. It is hanging on by a couple of bolts. And it's better to take it off with the engine upright anyway, just in case there's any sludge and whatnot in there that can drain back sort of up. So pop this end off here, and we should be in some shape to get it off. Let us have a bit of a look. I've got to sort of sit the engine on blocks of wood to save the strainer and so forth from hitting the floor. Actually, that hangs down quite a long way. That's a pain. And that sump is pretty clean. Go squeaky. All that's in there is oil, which is what we want to see. So that's good. I'm just wondering where all that oil was coming out. I'm wondering if it was leaking out of there. Oh no, that leaks back in. That must be for the um, older style rear main where it sort of runs a slinger. This has the uh, seal on the back. So let's put that to the side and I'll go and find some bolts or some blocks of wood to um, get underneath there. I got rid of all that paint and straight off the bat it looks better. So the next thing we're going to do is sit on the ground and get this back plate off. Actually, we've got the timing case to get off the front as well. Making little stands for the engine to sit on, which is... I just don't have any faith in those threads at the back to hang it off on a crane or on a stand. And this way I can just sort of sit it there and sort of do what I need to do with that. Um, and it'll be stable. I can just put a garbage bag underneath and sort of stand it up on the garbage bag with it over it so it doesn't get any muck inside. And at least then it'll have some stability. Cool. That's the front one. Right, so I've got that sitting on its blocks. It's rock solid, which is good. Now we can take the back plate off and replace the rear main and the gasket at the back. And take the timing case off. Check out the timing chain. Um, Mask it up and paint it. Now I've got a large 
a huge garbage bag sitting over it, or under it, I should say. So we can just pull the pants up to keep all the dirt out, and we're good. So that's about the only way I can think of doing this. I just, I'm just gun shy of those threads at the back. That's all. Maybe it's paranoia, and there's probably BMC mechanics looking at this, laughing at me. But I'll cop the uh, ridicule. I don't mind. We've got the timing case off. Um, whoops. The what did I say? The block's fairly clean. I've still got to clean it up with rag and prepsol, but um, I want to. Um, I'm half expecting the. Oh great! We've got half and seven sixteenth. I'm sort of um, expecting to do a timing chain and tensioner on it. They're very very cheap for a B series, so any doubt if it's got any slack, which it will, I'm tipping I'm going to be replacing it. Might as well. The engine's out. I've got to take this off to put a seal in. Hopefully this isn't the early felt type. I don't think it is. I think that's a normal seal in there. I haven't had a good look at it yet. But we'll take this off and um, send them off to the platers as well, like everything else I do. And we should be good. Where's my... Oh, there it is. I wonder if I can just slip that under there. Oh, gee, that was pretty easy. Good. No, I've just got this um got this camera on. Just put that there. That's not bad at all. Actually I don't need I don't think I need to change that. I'm not gonna bother changing that at all. That's good as gold. How about that? God. This gets better and better this thing. Show me where it's sanded. It's in your bedroom, Rosie. Oh, that one. Yeah, that one. Okay. Right, so, pardon me. I'm going to take this. The light's dreadful. I'm just trying to get the other stand. I'm just going to pop this rear main retaining ring off, or horseshoe thing, whatever you call it. And um, it's good that whoever had this engine out put these tabs back on. They're a bit manky and second hand. But the fact is, they've been put back on. I'm talking about these straps here. So perhaps I'll get new ones or something, I don't know. We don't need to plate any of this stuff. I mean, we're just going to put them back in. Of course, this goes through to the block. And these are 5 sixteenths fine. Um, and again, you know, they're just small threads. That's why I've got this thing sitting on blocks. Now, when I set those blocks up, I set up enough space underneath the rear plate. There's uh, 10 mil there. Um, so we can just slide the plate off with the engine sitting on those blocks and it also allowed about the same sort of room as underneath the oil pickup as well. I left that there. Okay, hang on, maybe I'll just swap stands. Hang on a sec. That might be a bit better. This is a $12 um, camera tripod off eBay. My one that I normally use, the bottom part of the legs doesn't fold up because it broke and I sort of just self tapped it back together. Right. That's that. So we need to take these out now, and well, the whole back of the engine will be divulged. So um, we'll start with the. Can I move that up? Where is it? This, which is courtesy Toyota. Dave put it there to lift the engine out. So we'll. Is that nine sixteenths? Yep, it is. We'll take that out. And this one, which I loosened before, <clears throat> you can see actually. Whoa. Here, there's oil coming out of the thread holes. Not a big deal, but I'm going to put some GM sealer on those bolts when I stick them back in, just to seal them up properly. Um, evidently, this thing wasn't leaking from the rear main, which was my original diagnosis. I think the gearbox is leaking quite badly, but so I'm going to have to take that out and reseal that as well. But um, it was mentioned that the breather, the front breather box, um, with the hose that goes up to the air filters, they block and the engine pressurizes and of course oil pours out of every gasket and seal, which makes perfect sense because Nissan were bad for that on the 240 and 260Zs. They used to blow a whole ton of smoke when the PCBs blocked up in them or the crankcase ventilation blocked up. Um, this one's clear, clear as a bell. So I thought it was engine oil though. So I'm probably wrong, but you know what? I'm glad we've taken this out. We're going to clean it up, put it back in and I'll be really happy with it. Well, there you go. The, um, let's get my hammer. Looks like the Amityville Horror MGB engine. Instead of blood coming out of the walls, we've got 
oil coming out of the walls. And there. I'm using a soft hammer. Oh golly, now we've got oil everywhere. This isn't a bad gig though, I'll tell you why, because I can get to the whole crank journal, which looks pretty clean anyway, I was going to say and clean it all up, I don't think it needs cleaning up, it's spotless, but um, I was like that there, but that is good, very good, rather good, very, very spiffy. Uh, Welsh plug from hell to get to, um, these are the ones that are just sort of like a flat disc and they're kind of um, pinned in the centre to sort of push them out. That one doesn't leak, it's mild steel um, and the coolant. I'm not actually not going to do it, which seems like suicide because normally this is an engine out, pull everything to bits, job to do. Um, I've never done those ones though, I don't know my way around those, but the coolant in this thing you could drink if it wasn't toxic. It's that clean and the engine's in just such beautiful condition, I'm not going to do it, which is going to raise a few eyebrows I reckon. Uh, there's the engine, all packed up, sleeping tonight, and we'll come in again tomorrow and uh, revisit. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about parts, of course. We've got this gasket you can see, it's nice and fresh on the edge, and it's been hanging out in this garage for about 10 years, a long time. Uh, it also in there is, I might have gone through this earlier, I can't remember, because it's been a week since I pulled the camera out. Bits and pieces, rear gasket and all that sort of stuff. Rear main all sealed, timing case all sealed. That's not part of the gasket, I just sort of threw it in there. So we've got gaskets, which is good. Um, also found these, and these are the grommets. Now I've had these for a long time. And these are the grommets that go into the rock cover. Um, and they sit like that, and of course you've got your chrome nut up the top that pushes that down, and therefore the rock cover into the gasket. Now, I use the old ones on that rock cover that I've got, and they're all sort of had it. But the reason for that is because I lost these. I couldn't find them anywhere. And so I just went with the old ones. And then, of course, they've turned up for this. But the clincher is that these have turned up and then I've lost the bolt. So they're in here somewhere. They'll turn up, though. I'm not too phased about that. Um, also, the heat shield. And this one is the old one. We can plate this sort of stuff. It's very easy to plate. But the problem is you can see a bit of brazing there. This thing's been cracked. It's all sort of brazed up through there. A couple of fractures there. I think this is junk. Um, so, of course, we've got a brand new one which is here. And it's just going to look so much nicer on a nice new painted engine and so on. So I've got that and of course bought, well, bought two new phenolic spaces, which sort of fit in there and Carby's mount up and all that sort of stuff. We've got the old ones, so there's nothing wrong with the old ones, but I got my brother to order this stuff because he works for a classic car place. And he got them, of course, we're missing a stud. We're getting a whole new set of studs for the intake and exhaust manifolds. Oh boy, over here we have some jets for our carbies. Remember they leaked, so we'll put a fuel filter on. We've got a whole roll of six and a half mil fuel line, which I bought yeah, a year ago, I think. Uh, it was cheaper to buy in the roll than it was to buy a couple of meters. So we can do our carburetor overflows with this stuff and fuel lines. And there it is there, it's nice and new and spiffy, so that's cool. And I've got a filter somewhere which I bought. Actually, it was more than a year ago. I can't remember what I've done with this stuff. Um, of course, I've got two cars and three bikes disassembled in here, so finding things can be a bit of a challenge. And of course, we've had a new ring gear fitted to our flywheel. So it's nice and brand new. Um, of course, that was... I didn't fit that either. You've got to heat these things up and drop them on them and of course they contract around the flywheel. I didn't want to change the flywheels because I'm very happy with this one. But now we have a new ring gear, we're good to go. So we can start assembling that. Now I had a look at the casting clock or casting date on the block. It's got 5466 which I'm assuming uh, is 5th of April 1966 or it could have been the 4th of May. Whatever the case, the car was built in 64 so it's not the right engine. Now, some of the very early 60, or very late 64 ones, I rather, I beg your pardon, are, um, actually had five bearing engines in them. It is the correct five bearing engine for the car, given that it has those um, big ends 
like that the offset cut begins now piston we don't need that I've ordered a new piston for the XL bike you can see where that one's been punched in the face a few times no one feels good after a punch in the face and I'm sure that piston doesn't either so I've ordered a new one for the bike now this engine's been a few different colors timing case um, of course we can see the last color it was painted was black it's been painted a red that looks a lot like Chevy orange um, but particularly like rocket red which is all your Holden red motors um, from the very late 60s through to 19... 78 with the V B Commodore. I think they went the VC went to a blue motor. And of course you got this blood red colour which is the original colour. Now I got this paint, which is gross, for five bucks. Because the guy was throwing it out. I thought it looked right, but it's actually too brown. Okay. Even though it looks fairly close there, which is what I noticed on it, it is actually more brown than red. Now the oil pan tells the same story. We've got loads of different colours there, we need to sand all this off and paint it properly. There's even the incorrect red on the carburetor bowls. Now anyway, look, I'm just going to move this. I'm going to use this as a guide. We've got a bit of enamel. This is air dry. And it's just too red. Now I just pick this off a swatch and swatches are never accurate in colour. I pick this as being a dark red and they might as well give me orange or green. It doesn't look anything like the colour we want. And if I just get a bit of that and dab it somewhere around here, it's red. But not quite the colour red I want. Having said that, it's not offensive. So we can mess with it a bit. Here's a bit of reduced black. It's the same flavour of paint. It's an air dry enamel. I'm just going to chuck a bit of black in here and see what happens. Eh? Oops. It's not an unpleasant red though. It's just a little bit too bright for what the car should have. It's sort of a a bit of a um a bit of a blood red. Gee, that's not good. And this hole's knocked in there. I'm just gonna throw a bit of black in. There we go. Just a little bit. We're looking for and paint's good, you can mess with paint. You can put a bit of white in to pale it up too much of course will make it pink you can put a bit of ochre in which is a mustard color and that ochre paint will warm the color up and a bit of black like this will pull it down now straight away that's looking pretty good and you know what I think we're going to go with that we've just put a dab of black in not much we don't need much but that's a really pleasant color I like that I'm happy with that um, too much will muddy it up too much or too much will make it look a bit more muddy but you can see there it's only a shade or two it's probably two shades there but I reckon that's the way to go I think we're going to do our engine this color of course that beautiful red is going to sit well with all those nice plated parts uh, and the yellow fan and all that sort of stuff so I think that's a win I think that's what we're going to go with this paint of course I can't remember how much it was I think it was $25 you can buy correct colored BMC reds. And don't forget, BMC painted the reds in all different colors. I think midgets and sprites used a green. There was a pale green and there was also an olive green. But um, for our B, I think that's gonna be just fine. Now, one thing I always do, we'll get a nail, run it into the rim. I like to put four holes in and everyone's gonna tell you, you can't do this. And they'll tell you that the can will not seal Whoops. and consequently dry the product out. But that actually, oh, it looks like I'm bleeding. That actually isn't true. I've got 20 year old cans of acrylic paint, which dries very quickly, that I've done this to. Never had a moment's worry. Um, if you're worried about splash, just throw a rag over the top and that will stop any paint from flying out when you knock the lid on. There we go. And we're good to go. Beautiful. I'm wrapped with that colour. Right, so this is the Plymouth. And this engine I painted in air dry number, which is what we're painting our MG engine in. Used a brush to paint the block. And all the tinware was spray painted. So that's what we're going to do with the B. That's black air dry. And of course, that's the red from the Plymouth. It's a little bit more orange than what I wanted for the B. 
but it's the same sort of paint. Now, as far as paint goes, the XC, this one here, the XW are both painted in acrylic. Acrylic paint will dry very quickly out of the gun. The Plymouth is painted in two pack. Now, air dry enamel is just that. It's air drying, so it takes a long time to dry. 24 hours to dry properly. Recoat in probably eight or 10. You can shoot it on literally a 35 degrees Celsius day. Now, given that we're in here and moving all this stuff out is a, a bit of a hassle, I'm gonna paint the MG engine, the block in here with the brush and all the tins I'll do outside on a trestle. So here's our lovely little B-series. The plastic bag arrangement was a fail. <laughs> so I've got cardboard down here boxing the, the lower end in. Um, now this looks a lot cleaner than it was, but of course if I get a white rag, it's not clean. It just isn't. So we need to think about cleaning this. Now we can get spray on degreases and all this crap. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm using this, which is just normal prep sole now. This retails at 11 bucks for a one litre can. We're not going to use, even at 11 bucks actually, it's still cheaper than getting several cans of brake clean or whatever. But if you go to Milsom's in Ferns Regalia, this costs $3.50 to refill that can. So bang for your buck, it's just a better way to go. Um, this can's an old can, but because uh, of the fact that we can refill it, coming, then, you know, it's just a much, much cheaper way to go. So we can clean our block up, and we know, without any shadow of doubt, that once this thing's cleaned properly, that paint is going to stick. And enamel paints, by tradition, have absolutely brilliant adhesion. Just thought I'd uh, mention this. This is the block train. It just runs on a sort of a conical thing. Believe it or not, that's clean. I've just put a little bit of grease in there. And it is the most extraordinarily beautiful bit of kit. Now, it just has a little keeper down the bottom. So it can only turn on that way and off that way, if you know what I mean. Followed by a spring and a washer and a split pin. And this is going to probably fly because I've got the wrong glasses on. Hang on, where's the hole? Let me see where the hole is first. It is to the side. And we'll just pop that on. And put a split pin through. Oh, that's stiff. Hang on, maybe if I push that down. And I just think it's lovely, and it's nice to see this sort of thing, gosh, prevailing on an old car. This wasn't operational, it was actually, um, what's the word for it, it was block solid, and it got a little bit more to go. It was block solid all through here, so it wasn't, and this was seized, but of course, in taking that spring off, I could just give it a tap out here and it just fell out and uh, ran a drill bit through it just by hand to clean it up and you can see just by doing that let's get a clip which cut the little legs off and that looks absolutely gorgeous doesn't it it's a bit stiff but it is functional and we can just prep so that just stick a bit of clear on and you'll have that nice sort of brush look I did it with scotch bright I didn't want it highly polished I just want it to look nice on the side of the block and I think we've achieved that right there I just stuck a bit of rattle can clear on it I'll pop that in the base of that spanner and just let that sit until it dries that'll preserve that nice sort of antique look so here we have our thermostat housing and that's not a new part, it's the old one, but there's absolutely no corrosion. A little bit of activity there from the past sometime, but it is in impeccable condition. I've just gone over this, it looks like it's been hydrated, but it hasn't. It's actually just been scotch prided. There's a few little bits and pieces we can do to finesse it. But that's another part that we've got ready to go on. So that's as far as I want to go with cleaning. Um, it has cost a bit of dirty old thinners um, to get the residual stuff off. An old pair of jeans, a couple of old rags, and this prep sole, which has, how much is it left? It's still up here. So it's cost like 80 cents to, not even that. It's just been a matter of change to clean it up. 
which is easily the best way to go. Uh, it is a bit time consuming, but you'll know if you've got it clean enough, because if tape sticks to it, it's clean, which is cool. So I'm going to um, mask off, but I'm only going to mask off in a certain way. I'm, I think it doesn't make sense at the moment, because it is brush painted, or it's going to be brush painted. Um, but I don't want it to look brush painted, because essentially we're cheating. So I'm just going to stick tape on. I'll have the gasket surfaces, because I don't want to see brush runs. <laughs> or tracking in places where it isn't meant to be. So I'm just going to go around and do this. And it'll make sense in a moment. You're probably thinking, what the hell is he doing? But it will make sense. I'm not going to promise you, but I'll say it will make sense. That's what it is too. So we'll go along here. Oh, I'm probably getting carried away here. Um, and it doesn't matter. I just, I really don't want this to look like I did it in my backyard with a brush. Even though everyone seeing this, myself included, knows. It just contributes to a better finish. I, I think, anyway. And I'll tell you what, this is clean. It doesn't look it, but I can't get some of this tape off. To get the, um... Radius around the front and rear of the rock cover because the rock, the front of it goes sort of right up against the thermostat housing almost. I've just centered this up here somehow <laughs> and run around it with a razor blade like that. It's nice and easy and it gives a nice sort of curve. I've just thrown in the a couple of studs and we can put that on like that and that'll show us. We can just double check where the ports are and we can lose that pen which is over here. And just draw around it and uh, that'll give us an idea of where to cut because I want I might cut against there actually um, this probably seems like a lot of stuffing around and this is purely optional this is just me being a bit anal but um, it just gives a better result you know right time to give it a paint job I've actually started brushing the other side and I'm delighted with the coverage it's um it's covering really well we'll give it two coats that, and basically we just brush the stuff on and it covers beautifully look at that so this being it's a very hot day today it's 30 how, what is it in here it's 34 degrees in here at the moment this is perfect weather for brushing on air dry enamel every time i get a brush out or something to that effect bloody phone rings now, where was I? I was putting this stuff on, wasn't I? No, 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 no. In there. They can be tricky cleaning up in areas like that. So we're just going to splooch it around. Not too thickly. Because um, this is a first coat. But it does cover very, very well. Um, and it covers up the old paint. There's the bit of old paint there. You don't need to etch, you know, I don't, well at least I don't think you need to etch plate. What's it called? Etch prime blocks because the castings are so rough. These bits in here are smooth. Um, we can just brush that off. The second coat will cover that really, really nicely. Um, and looking at this, it's probably a bit too red. But then again, I probably don't care. I think it's going to look so much better than it did anyway. I took out the pressure regs and all that sort of stuff, or the oil pump pressure um, valve. I'm just going to have to get off my seat in a minute. I'm just sort of doing it like this so you can see what I'm doing. But I'd be interested to know what you think. What do you reckon? It's um, I like it. You know, it's being air dry. This stuff takes a long time to go off. Um, in this weather, it's a bit quicker, but. Given that it goes off so quick, or such a, in, at such a slow rate, I should say, um, it'll self-level, so you won't see brush marks. Um, and even so, even if you did, most of the engine's covered up anyway. You won't see any of this, because this has all got carburetors and um, exhaust manifold, and also the heat shields and all this sort of stuff. So you won't see a great deal of this. 
Now, a lot of British cars are exceedingly expensive. If you look at Aston Martins and certain models of Jaguar, things like that, very, very expensive cars. Uh, many Jags, of course, are, are very, very reasonable to buy. Series 1, 2 and 3 cars are very reasonable. XJ40, stuff like that. Uh, you really do need to, if you think of a car like that, to be prepared to work on it yourself because the labour charges on them are huge. And I know that because I used to work on the things. I used to work at a Jag dealer about 20, well, 27 years ago now. Uh, but the BMC stuff, unless it's a very rare car, are very, very affordable. And there's a lot of information pertinent to them that's available, of course. I'm not going to open these books because I don't want to get pinned for copyright. But uh, this is a, a, a wonderful publication. I got through the club. I'm a member of the Wolseley Car Club, a terrific club. If you're interested in joining a, joining a, a British car club, that's the way to go. Building Cars in Australia goes through all the, um, some of the CKD stuff as well, like the MGBs, but a lot of the cars that were actually built here, you know, your Morris Major Elites and your P76s and, uh, gee whiz, Wolsey 2480s and Austin Freeways, all these sorts of cars um, are covered in this book. There's a wealth of information. It's a brilliant, brilliant publication. I can't recommend that enough. Um, lots and lots of information on the MGs. This is a pearl if you think of restoring one, particularly doing things like sill repairs, panel work, that sort of stuff. All covered in here, lots and lots of photographs. I bought this in oh, 25th of the 12th. Someone gave it to me for Christmas in 2005. I bought mine, of course, in October, the, in October 2005 as well. This is one that my brother, this is my brother's book, and it goes into the C's and GT's as well. Lots of numbers and stats in this book. So, uh, for example, production runs, how many of this they made, how many of that. And the differences in trim, in body, and mechanical differences in all the models from uh, 1962, of course, right up to 1980 when they finished making them. That is a great book. And it also goes a lot into the complete knockdowns, the CKD cars like mine. Um, absolutely lovely book and extremely informative. And I thought I knew a bit about MGBs, but I read this and... My knowledge was comparatively small. And of course, a shop manual. And this is my brother's. He bought it for his first MGB, which was my first car at 18 years old. Um, I need to look in this, actually, because the leak I've got, the heavy oil leak, which I thought was rear main, is actually the front gearbox gasket. It's not the input shaft seal, it's the gasket. So I want to make sure when I take that off, the whole gearbox isn't going to fall in my face. So it's the sort of thing I want to do it in the car. So lots of information available for them. Um, the, look... MGBs can be $30,000 for an immaculate one that's basically a Concorde car, huh? right down to sort of six and 7000 for a fixer-upper that drives. So they're really, really affordable and lovely and simple to work on. So, I mean, I can't recommend these cars enough. So here's our engine after one coat of paint, and it looks rather lovely. It's still tacky, still a bit tacky. I only think I didn't pull off the front cover. I didn't want to upset the cam timing or anything like that. I couldn't be bothered, really, because it's... Um, a healthy little engine. So this is just, as we said, purely cosmetic and I'm moving things as I speak to you. Uh, in the next video, this paint job will all be finished and I won't be able to shoot the next video until about a fortnight because I'm waiting on electroplating. I've just taken it off today or took it to the place today and they've got a backlog so that's going to be about a fortnight away. So the next video is going to be on the Honda XL250. Um, Followed by some 751s, and of course I keep rattling on about that poor neglected XC Falcon in behind all that rubbish there. Uh, going to take these bits and pieces off to be media blasted. So, particularly the sump and the timing case. Um, exhaust manifold over there. Thinking about, um, I was thinking about ceramic coating on the recommendation from my brother, but he's not at work at the moment. He was the one going to send it off. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, should have a next video up on the bike in the next week. So uh, take care of yourselves, enjoy classic, and I'll see you later.